Yeah. <laughs> Just talk, do a TJ, do a TJ. So I can tell you what the pressures of DJ are. It's making sure that as soon as you turn that equipment on, it works. Now there's a lot of DJs that go out there and they charge peanuts and people want to book them. But what they don't realise is that these DJs don't have backup equipment. They're probably not insured. And, um, you know, if something goes wrong, if they're amp breaks or the speakers or whatever there's, there's no plan B the party stops so um, yeah there are there, there is a certain amount of pressure making sure that the sound is crystal clear and that your music is clear and the music doesn't stutter or you can you imagine a first dance and the bride and groom are halfway through and then the music stops or jumps or skips I take requests I'm fine with requests requests don't get me wrong, like, you're, you're not buying a jukebox, you're not renting a jukebox, you're renting, the, you're paying for a DJ, so you're paying for my knowledge. And I don't mind taking requests, because I want to play what people want to hear, but what I can't stand is the people that come up to you like, you want to play this, you want to play that, well, look at the dance floor, it's packed. So maybe if you ask me nicely, I might put your song on, but don't tell me how to do my job, because I'm not going to walk into your office tell you how to use Excel, yeah? Because I've done my European computer driving license. Are you a DJ? No, you're not. I will take bookings anywhere in the UK if the money's right, yeah? It's all about bunts. I'll even go abroad if you're gonna pay for a flight. Have you ever been abroad with yeah. your work? Like yeah, this? I, think so. I, I travel, we. <laughs> now, I've DJed in um, a club in Germany before, but apart from that, no. It's all been UK. Bad equipment really gets my goat. If somebody, you know, people are paying for a service, and if somebody, some people turn up with just a laptop but no controller or decks or anything, and or you know, they it's just the very, very basic equipment, and it's all run down, and there's no backup, and it's all a bit rough around the edges. And I just think, you know, if, entertainment is the thing that people most remember from a party because it's got the power to make the event or break the event yeah so why would you skimp on trying to save 50 quid or something like that if you know that there's a good dj or you know that there's a good company and you can read positive reviews about them rather than trying to save some money and actually ruining your night you might as well just you get what you pay for as well i'm trying to say i was working on my uncle's farm and i saved up some money and my parents also helped me buy some equipment I put an ad in the yellow pages and I started DJing and it was, my first gig was in a pub for free and it basically just took off. There's a demand out there. So I remember my dad used to drop me off and pick me up and um, people used to look at me going, oh my God, we've booked a child as our entertainment. And how old were you? 16 when I started, yeah. so I couldn't even drive. Um, but yeah, and, and then I'm 30, coming up 33 now, so but I did have a, a bit of a gap where I didn't, I took a break from it. A lot has changed since I started. So before, when I used to DJ, it was all done with CDs, and I used to take boxes and boxes of CDs to each gig, and now everything's moved up, moved on to computers and laptops and DJ controllers. So, for example, each song is about three minutes long, three and a half minutes long. Now when you're using CDs, you've only got that amount of time to find another CD, put it on, listen to it on the headphones, line up a good cue point, and then mix it in. And sometimes, you know, if you're playing a genre, 80s music or whatever, you've got to find that right next song. And if, if you're taking requests, you've got to then find that song in the CDs. Whereas with laptops, you can have playlists, you can have like, I, I rate all my music with either five stars, four, three, two, or one, you know, and I don't, I don't pretend to play anything less than four stars. So it's like, it's easy to filter out the next best song, um, or if someone's got a request, you literally just type it in and it's there. Everything's sort of lighter, easier to move, quicker to set up. We are, Rewind Entertainment is flexible. We, we do take bookings a year, two years in advance if people are getting married, we do do that. Um, However, we also take last minute bookings and, and occasionally we'll get a call where somebody needs a DJ that night 
for that weekend and you know there because we work there's a few there's a few of us that DJ for Rewind Entertainment we can fill those spots at last minute we can provide multiple DJs if needed yeah so we can if you're getting married and you want a sweet car or big light up letters um, or a photo booth then you get in touch and we can provide that um, however moving into 2022 and beyond we're gonna be moving into the space of entertainment management. So we're looking for DJs, bands, magicians, comedians, clowns, kids entertainers, fire breathers, anything like that, anything that comes under the entertainment umbrella, we're looking to take them on. Um, by all means, you're not contract contractually like tied to us but we we can get you bookings this is fantastic is it yeah it's good this i think is perfect behind the scenes videos yeah you would do it a lot dj but... behind the scenes yeah, yeah. Well, i started that youtube video isn't i but so what we call what we call in this what, what what we call in this behind the scenes then just um oh, the secrets the secrets. <laughs> uh, the just, secrets just, of a Dorset DJ. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to know a big secret? Yeah. Right, it's a DJ secret. It's called a fizzy black. So a when fizzy black. so a fizzy black, when you go to uh, a venue, if you ask for, a, I don't drink on jobs anyway, but if you ask for a beer or whatever, they're going to charge you, right? If you ask for Coke, some don't charge you, some do. If you ask for a black currant and soda, nine times out of ten. It's on the house because it's next to this water, isn't it? So um, it's pretty. So that, it's pretty. Advice. Yeah, it's pretty un rock and roll, isn't it? Like, oh, can I have a black currant and soda? But when you go out the by, hey, get us a <laughs> get us a, a fizzy black. Right. Top tips for DJs: yeah. make sure your equipment is backed up. Make sure you've got spare um, controller or spare mixer. Make sure your leads you've got spare ones because if an XLR cable goes down and you haven't got a spare one, then you're working off one and one speaker only. So make sure you've got backups. Make sure you're insured and you've got public liability. I would recommend making sure you've all your equipment's pat tested. And this is the reason why. Legally, do you have to have it pat tested? No. But some venues require all entertainers to be pat tested in order for them to go into that venue. And all that does is push out all the chances and all the people that are just trying to make a quick buck and doing it on the cheap right so if somebody's getting married and they want to have it in the manor house or some posh venue and you've not got pat tested then you, you might not get the gig and what is it it's a quid an item say you've got 50 items that's 50 quid for the year right and you get a certificate so there's there's another top tip make sure your breath always smells nice take some yeah. mints with you you know if people are coming up for requests make sure you've not got a big bit of cabbage hanging out your teeth when people get in touch, I know sometimes you might be busy, sometimes you might be out, but try and get back to everybody within 24 hours because you've got to put yourself in their position. If you're looking for an entertainer or a DJ, you're probably going to be emailing or texting multiple people, right? And not everyone's going to get back straight away. So while they're emailing you, they're in that headspace of booking a DJ or trying to find out more. So if you can get back to them, almost instantly then they're in that headspace rather than you trying to approach them 24 hours later or that evening and then be having dinner and, and just push it to one side or if you do leave it too long someone else might have already got in there I find that most people when they get in touch with me if I'm quick to respond and I stick all my links to all my social medias and my reviews then straight away you've got a bite and they think yeah this is a professional company this is a somebody I can communicate with um, and they obviously provide a good service because <laughs> I watch that <laughs> I go oh that's me he's on about there slagging off me <laughs> all right, so, all right let's guys, work, let's and I'm work. not gonna mention any names Dave Rogers <laughs> but he won't work the next day my tip is that there's so much work out there and all you've got to do is be hungry for it. This weekend I've got three gigs. Last weekend I have four gigs. It's there for the taking. All you've got to do is be quick to respond, 
provide a professional service. Go out there and get it. Print some leaflets off. I spent last week, I spent the afternoon walking around with my son, my eight-year-old, walking around pubs and bars during the afternoon, handing out flyers. Just walked in there. Hi, I'm a local DJ. Um, if you have any events coming up, give us a shout. And then they've got your flyer and they've seen you face to face. So, you know, if you're hungry for it, the work's there. If you just set up a Facebook page and then sit back and wait for the work to come in, it's probably not going to come in. You're probably not going to be busy.